Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about Raccoon, an info stealer malware that's been quite active lately. Now usually it's the ransomware that gets all the attention. Part of the reason is its effects are easy to see. Everyone knows when they're infected by ransomware. There's a ransom message on the screen. There's threatening demands. But it's usually stuff like this that actually leads to the ransomware attacks that you see causing millions of dollars worth of damage. Because this is typically how hackers get into your system in the first place. And then there's all the privilege escalation, lateral movement, you know, all the good stuff. <laughs> well, bad stuff. So Raccoon attacks popular crypto wallets and pretty much every browser under the sun. So whether it's Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Vivaldi, it doesn't care. It will try to steal information from all of them. This is also malware as a service, which again is a thing these days. What this means is the people who develop this malware actually sell it on forums as a package to other cyber criminals. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a forum post here. It's in Russian, as all such posts are legally required to be. I'm just kidding. And as you can tell, I mean, this is like a typical software development update, right? It's a new release version. They've made some improvements. Uh, stub has been cleaned. They've added the time zone of the victim. And I'm sure all of their quote unquote customers are going, yay, thanks for the improvements, guys. Here are some suggestions for the next print. So what does this do? With malware like this, there are usually two main objectives. One is to get any kind of financial data that they can immediately cash out. So for example, if they manage to steal credentials for your crypto wallet, they will just run with it. So let's say your company gets infected by a raccoon. You don't notice, you don't care because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't disrupt your day-to-day -day activity. So as a user, you don't notice it. But what it could be doing in the background is getting all of your login credentials for all your company services, your administrator accounts, and even if they don't manage to cash out anything that is financial that they can immediately exploit, what they will then do is take all the login credentials they've gathered and go back to their friends on forums like these and put those up for sale. And then there could be a ransomware developer there who wants to target your organization and who's going to pay good money to get your login credentials. And then all of a sudden you've got a ransomware and you don't know where it came from or how you got hacked because the hack may have happened a year ago. They might have got your login credentials then. Also, this is not new malware. This was first seen in April 2019, and it's apparently being sold for about US dollars 75 per week and 200 per month. So you know the people buying it are at least making that much off of it. Now let's talk about attack vectors. So the two primary ways that it gets onto your system is via exploit kits and phishing campaigns. A common method with phishing campaigns these days is to have a Microsoft Office document with a macro. A good way to counter that, I'd say, is to open all your documents online. I mean, all of Microsoft tools are available on the cloud these days, so if you just use the cloud version instead of the version on your system, you will probably escape the macro. But again, there's a lot of places where the level of awareness for things like this is just not there yet. Like with all major malware, Raccoon has its command and control server and even has options and features that the attackers can use to customize it depending on the target victims. Since this is an info stealer, the command and control is crucial here because if it cannot send the information back out, the damage is mitigated. So if you've got a good firewall or something that's blocked the CNC, even if the malware does get through, it really can't do much because it cannot send the information back. Another thing to note is Malware like this typically uses a lot of encryption. Part of the reason is the success of malware like this depends highly on the fact that analysts don't break into it very early and find out the command and control server, put it on the web for everyone to blacklist. One of the side effects is that a lot of security companies, especially the enterprise vendors, are trying to pretty much block anything that uses encryption which obviously creates a lot of false positives because encryption is quite widespread technology. I mean, it's hard to imagine any kind of sophisticated application that doesn't use encryption at all. I guess what a lot of vendors are doing is blocking all sorts of non-standard encryption or using a whitelist for certain sections. I don't know how I feel about that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you think that's a good approach to blocking this kind of malware. If we look at Forest Total, this is likely the command and control server domain. This is the URL it uses to export to uh, Google Drive. 
And if we look at detection, at the moment it's detected by 61 engines. Not surprised, it's been quite a while. But I guess partly the issue is how many login credentials have been collected by this malware already and where are they? We'll probably never find out. But when you hear of the next ransomware attack, the next breach, that could all be because of what Raccoon has got in its burrow. This malware does seem to be VM aware. I tried to get it running on my virtual machine, but I haven't been successful. I'm not sure if that's just because it needs to be deployed in a certain way to get its information, to be able to connect to the command and control server, and otherwise it just creates an error and terminates, or if it's just detecting my VM and refusing to run. It's kind of hard to say because if we go ahead and do this, there you go. We, we just get the error module load and then it just terminates. But if it did successfully execute, what it would do is it would create a new document here in your temp files that has all the stolen credentials, which would then obviously be transferred over to the attackers. So again, this is why you probably want to monitor your system, keep an eye on it, even if nothing seems to be wrong. This is also why I don't like this approach where people are like, well, I've never been infected, so I can do whatever I want. I don't care. I've never been infected. Because <laughs> do you really know if you've never been infected, right? It's like, oh, you've never been infected, but all your login credentials are in Raccoon's pocket. So it's always a good idea to maintain good security practices, even if you think you've never been infected. Do some routine checks. Go into process and see what's running. The real damage does not happen from people accidentally running ransomware and thinking, oh crap, and then reformatting their system because all they had there was Fortnite anyway. The real damage happens when there's attacks like this, people don't notice it until it's way too late. Remember, most malware wants to be sneaky. They're not going to show their cards until they have you in their grasp. They might even self-terminate and delete traces after they're done with their work. So it never hurts to be cautious. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did. Thank you so much for watching. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.